Sweet potatoes are some pretty hearty little boogers. Sometimes I do have bright ideas. Voila! I'm gonna fire it up, y'all. Isn't that fancy? It's fancy. They are addictive, okay? You've been warned. <laughs> Welcome back. It has been a while. It has been a long time. We're going to change that starting today <laughs> with a new recipe that I'm super excited to share with y'all. Um, yes, I have been absent here on this channel because the other channel, my farming channel, has just been really busy. We've been busy on the farm all summer. <laughs> Spring? summer and now it's fall and things are still rolling but I am excited to get back on here and start sharing more recipes and I'm excited that you're here to watch so today I'm so excited to be doing another video in partnership with the North Carolina Sweet Potato Commission which you can find online at ncsweetpotatoes.com your one-stop source for all things sweet potato facts, information, recipes, and all the things from the number one producing state of sweet potatoes, North Carolina. And yes, we're proud of that. Okay, so today's recipe includes sweet potatoes on the grill. Yeah, we're going to call it savory grilled sweet potatoes because they are savory. They're delicious, and they're not only delicious, they're simple to make. So, let's get to it. Okay, y'all, this is it. This is the start of the show. You're just gonna have to trust me here, all right? It's so simple. We have sweet potatoes, a pound of sweet potatoes. These are pretty large. I'm only gonna do two of them, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with them. We're gonna use some ranch dip mix or ranch dressing mix. It doesn't matter. Whatever kind, I just picked this up at a local pig, but you can use whatever kind you want. Kosher salt olive oil, and then I'm gonna show you two ways. I'm gonna show you half of them are gonna be done with the ranch mix, and half I'm gonna use my favorite seasoning, musket powder. You could also use a steak seasoning or taco seasoning, or we'll talk about that in a bit too. So, let's get cutting. Excuse me. Okay, first we are going to wash the sweet potatoes, and I'm actually gonna leave the skin on for this recipe. You could peel them if you want to. It's up to you. We have choices, y'all. Choices are good. All right, but we are gonna wash them right now. Two lean, mean, wash sweet potatoes. Okay, next I'm gonna cut these sweet potatoes into wedges. You could also do this different ways. The biggest thing you wanna do is to make sure that the pieces are pretty uniform in size. I tried this two different ways and I prefer the wedges. You could cut them in half and then cut them lengthwise and like strips. You could do that, but I'm going with the wedge. Yeah. Sweet potatoes are some pretty hardy little boogers, so they can be kind of hard to cut, right? Um, but this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut it in half, yeah had to remember. Okay. Voila! Isn't that pretty? Yes, they are. Okay, I'm going to cut it in half, then cut it in half, then cut it in half, then cut it. We got lots of halves. We're doing lots of halves here. So then we'll have quarters, and then we're actually going to end up with eighths. You didn't know you were going to math class, did you? I didn't either, because I'm not even good at math, but I can do this. And no, I am not a professional cutter. I'm not, but I can do this. You see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is what we've got. All right, and we're just gonna do this twice more. No, three times more. <laughs> And there we have it. Two sweet potatoes cut up in wedges. 
Now we're gonna put the wedges in a pot. We're gonna cover it with some water. We're gonna bring it to a boil and we're gonna parboil them for five minutes. That's all y'all, not long. I am going to cover that bad boy to get this going faster. So one thing you could do to make this step a little bit faster would be to put the water in the pot, let it start heating to boil while you are washing and cutting the sweet potatoes, and then you could put the sweet potatoes in there and you don't have to wait on it to boil like I'm having to do. Sometimes I do have bright ideas. They just come after the fact. What do you think, Bonnie? You like sweet potatoes? Yeah, Ma but I really want you to rub my belly. That's what I really want you to do. And the dogs have been here. This is what they do now for some reason. It's very annoying. Anywho, we're gonna prep this grill. It just needs to be cleaned. Um, oh, good. I was coming to make sure that I'd actually cleaned the grill after I used it last time. And for a change, I actually did. Winning. Okay, before I use it, I'm gonna spray it with some cooking oil. And then, I'm gonna get it fired up. I'm gonna fire it up, y'all. Turn on our little propane. There we go. And get her going. Yeah, like that. And let it be heating up. So when those are done, the grill will be ready. All right. And look what happened while we were outside. It started boiling. That whole thing about a watch pot never boils, but if you leave, it will. So that's where we're at. We're gonna let these boil for five minutes, then we're gonna let them cool, then we're gonna toss, and we're gonna grill. Okay, they are done. Okay, once they have cooled off a little bit and they're not steaming so much, you're gonna wanna take them and put them in a bowl and toss them with the other ingredients. And like I said, I'm gonna show you two different ways, but obviously if you're using only one type of seasoning, just put it in one bowl. Okay, now for the very fun and very easy part, you're gonna wanna take some olive oil. I'm just gonna drizzle it over like so, okay? Just, I don't know, a tablespoon, two tablespoons, whatever makes you happy. And then I'm just gonna put some salt. I don't know how much, about that much. Just coat it with some salt, y'all. Um, let's see, these are gonna be my musket powder ones. I'll probably put like, I don't know, a tablespoon, half a tablespoon. For the ranch, I'm just gonna do this little number like that. Probably, I would say like a table. Oh my gosh. Okay, what you're, what you're not gonna wanna do is drop it in the floor, but um, don't be like me. Don't do that. So anyway, let's say a tablespoon. If you were doing this all together, I would say two tablespoons of the ranch mix or two tablespoons of your favorite, other favorite seasoning, steak seasoning or musket powder, or you could even use taco seasoning if you wanted to do that. Yeah, really, I think the possibilities are pretty endless. These are just the two that I tried and loved both of them. So that's why I'm showing you that. Okay, and now that everything's in there, you're just gonna you're just gonna toss it around and get it good and coated. That's literally all there is to it, y'all. You see how easy this is? All right, we're ready to grill. Alrighty, the grill is good and hot. And we're just gonna place them directly on it. You could also do these on a grill pan. You could totally do that. But this works just as well. And it leaves these pretty little grill marks on it. I don't know. I'd rather direct grill when I can, if at all possible. If you can put it on one side, it's gonna make it easier to flip them over. See, like that. Okay, now that they're all on there, we're just gonna close the lid and we're gonna let them cook for about three to four minutes. Flip, do the same, and we're gonna have some delicious sweet potatoes, y'all. Okay, let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, look at that. 
Isn't that fancy? It's fancy. It's beautiful. I mean, I feel like these, not only are these crowd pleasers, they're beautiful to beat. These would be perfect to serve for guests. You don't have to tell them how easy they were to make. Or you can, you can share the love. I'm all about sharing the love, y'all. All right, I'm just gonna flip everybody. Yeah, oh man. Um, I gotta tell you something in a second. Okay, so while I wait for those to cook, I will, I will confess something. When I was making these the first time, I tried a few different ways to do these grilled sweet potatoes and it took me three, four tries to get them just right. But here we are and they're just right. Anywho, so when I did this recipe and finally got it right, I did one sweet potato. So I had 18 wedges, no, 16 wedges. I ate, um, I ate 15 of them in one sitting. I let my son try one and then I just kept standing there and they just kept going in my mouth and into my belly because they were so good. So I'm just warning you that they are addictive. Okay? You've been warned. And we're done, y'all. We are done, you see that? Both sides. Grilled to perfection. Yeah, buddy. They smell so good too. These would pair well with so many things, y'all. Burgers, steaks, uh, roast. Look at me naming all the beef things because I'm the beef lady. I'm sure they would go well with chicken, however you cook that, pork, all the things. Or even as an appetizer, y'all, these would make a great appetizer. Sky's the limit. Okay, and this is completely optional, but I just chopped up a little fresh parsley to put with them. And that's a really nice touch. You could also use cilantro. I just prefer parsley to cilantro, but whatever floats your boat is whatever should top your sweet potato. Okay, y'all, the recipe could end there. And if it does, that is fine. They are amazing, just like this, okay? But if you wanted to dip them in something like homemade ranch dressing, I'm just here to say that that is also an amazing thing to do, okay? So bonus round, I'm gonna show you how I make my dressing. And it is also super simple and super delicious. In fact, since I started doing this a couple years ago, I don't buy ranch anymore. I do not buy ranch dressing in a bottle because it just doesn't compare. It just doesn't. So how I make my ranch dressing, I either use this dip mix or ranch dressing mix. I think I just, I picked up the wrong one, but it doesn't matter. It's all in my book, it's all the same, y'all. It's all, it's it's close enough, okay? So, I use that. I use mayonnaise. I use Duke's because that's um, the only thing that I know to use. There is no other mayonnaise in the South anyway. So, I just put some in there and I'll just top it with some more of the dip mix or the dressing mix and put just a little bit of milk, y'all. This is where I mess up sometimes. If you follow directions on the packet, usually it tells you to use more milk than is actually required because I prefer mine thick instead of runny. So anyway, I use my little whisk, whisk it up just like that. And ooh, look at here, one-handed. Look what's happening. It's working though. So far, so good. We have dip. I mean, we have dressing. I mean, we have dip and dressing. It's multi-use, y'all. Multi-use. Okay. There we go. You just take that little wedge and you just dip it in there like that. Well, you might want to put it in your own bowl. You might not want to put it in the bowl that you're going to serve the family out of, but whatever. It all works. Mmm. Y'all don't understand how good these are, even without the dressing. Mm. I need you to understand. And the only way you're gonna understand 
as if you make them yourself. So please tell me you will. Please try these. I promise you're going to love them. Okay. Happy cooking. Happy eating. Until next time.